Good morning. My name is James Little from Mass Spec Interpretation Services. Today I would like to share with you a video on using Agilent Mass Hunter software to perform NIST MSMS searches to identify unknowns. This is truly just an overview of the process, so if you really want to learn how to do it for your analyses, see the videos below, the, the first three being on the basic qualitative analysis using the Mass Hunter software package, and then finally, the NIST MSMS full course that I have on my website that will teach you all the details of using the NIST software. And then there's some slides. This particular one's one that I will use in the v overview here to identify one of the components, but I have three groups of test files that you might find useful for learning how to use the software with all the actual identifications of all the components in the sample. Also, in this handout, there are details on using the settings for the NIST software. It's important to get the settings correct, and so there's several different windows you need to set up initially. And I've given some tips on how to do all of these in the, these next few slides, and I will not discuss them here, and I really will not talk about them in the video. So if you want to do this, you might find this a good resource for setting up your search parameters for the MSMS search. So it's a few slides on that. But the important part is after you get settings correct, save them in a configuration file. These are very handy because then you can, the next time when you want to do it, you can restore the configuration. And actually the settings don't change much between one type of search and the other. So if you get them set up, you'll only be changing a few of the settings. The other thing is that I use a lot of different libraries in my work, uh, some of over 3 million. But the ones that I'll talk about today are only the ones that came with the NIST search software. But there are also other ones that you can purchase either from Wiley or there's free Mona databases that are, can be found on the internet. But for your convenience, I have converted them into NIST format and you can download them from my website. So the first thing we'll do is open a data file in Mass Hunter. So go File, Open Data File. We're, we'll use this pesticide test mixture, open up the targeted MSMS data. And the first thing you'll notice that it's a very jagged display here, and that's because it's jumping between the MS and the MSMS data. So to process it, it's best to extract it into separate chromatograms. So we'll go up and say extract chromatograms. We'll take first the MS data. Now you can see well-defined components in the MS chromatogram. We'll go again and extract the chromatograms, this time extracting the MS MS. And so now we have all three, the original, the MS, and the MS MS. But the one I'm most interested in is the MS MS because I want to take it to the library search, the NIST library search. You'll notice it's still somewhat jagged, it and that's because it's doing it at different collision energies. I think maybe here it was 10, 20, 40 uh, voltages, and so it steps between them. But since, it, in this case, I think it's best just to average them all together. So I'll left click and drag to define the region for this component, and then ju just double left click, and it sends the MS-MS spectrum to the bottom window. Now, by selecting this bottom spectrum, you can right click and do a NIST search by selecting Send using NIST MS Program. It'll automatically bring the program into focus and do the search. And at the top here, you'll see the unknown spectrum, and also it'll bring in its precursor of mass to charge, which is good for restricting certain types of searches. In the middle, we'll have a butterfly plot with the known being on the bottom, the best hit that's selected, and on the top will be the unknown. If you go to the bottom, you'll see the best hit, which is the metazochlor. Now, if you want to step through some of them, come to the bottom window over here where this, the results of your search are found, and use the up and down arrows. I'll use the down arrow, and you'll see if you step through a bunch of these, they're all the spectrum of metazochlor, maybe from a different instrument, maybe different energy, but if you want to see what other type species might be present here, it's best to go up to this 
part of the menu bar and say Best Matching Only. Now you'll see that the best hit still is Metazoclor, which has a fit of about 682. The next one has a fit of about 148, and it's not really a good match at all. So you can see there really was no other possibilities that were reasonable besides Metazoclor for this unknown. If you go back up to the top here, let's see what uh, other searches we can do. We did an MSMS where the precursor is used to limit the search, the 278.1069 that was imported. But you also could just do a pattern match doing a high resolution, no precursor. And the other type of search that is very useful is to do the similarity with the MSMS hybrid. And the MSMS hybrid is very good if you wasn't, if the spectrum wasn't in the library, then it would find things that are similar. Maybe if it had a chlorine on it, an additional chlorine, you would find it and you would see the difference in mass between your unknown and your known were 34 plus a chlorine minus a hydrogen. And it gives you ideas about things that, that are not in your database. So it greatly extends the ability of your databases to find things that might not actually be present with the exact structure. Thus, I hope you can see how powerful the NIST search can be used to process LC, MS, MS data to identify unknowns using the NIST search. And indeed, many manufacturers have similar interfaces that allow their data processing software to send things to the MS, MS search. So I think, I hope you'll take advantage of my courses on my website to learn how to use the MS, MS search to identify unknowns in your work. Good day.